Hey, it's Jason with jams.net. I am here with my 2007 Land Rover Range Rover L322. This is the Buckingham Blue Land Rover. And I have not done what I plan to do on this truck in many months. I picked this up almost a year ago at this point, And it was supposed to be a project to get back on the road, but all the other projects kind of took precedence. But it is now gonna be the truck I start working on and getting back on the road this fall. And in order to do it, I need to know what codes are popping up and what do those codes mean. And I'm gonna walk you through the new launch reader that I'm gonna test on this 2007 Land Rover Range Rover L322. Let's go. And specifically, this is the launch C Reader Elite version 2.0. I've tested this on my other 07 Land Rover Range Rover, but they came out with a new version, so I'm excited to see how it looks and the difference. And as you can see, I've kind of neglected this poor Rover, but it is going to get cleaned up and all of the little issues are going to be fixed. But let's hop in. Broken door, that's on the to-do list. And let's unpackage this reader and see what it's all about. So it's gonna ship in your typical box. I usually like to keep the box so I can store this bad boy when I'm done with it. And it has a nice orange casing, so it looks similar to the other version. It feels like it might be a bit a bit smaller though. That's what you get. And you get a cable. And this is going to draw power from the vehicle. But it's also battery operated so you can charge it with a USB-C cable. And I really like that they're battery operated because if you unplug it, you can kind of take it to your desk and see what it said and all of that good stuff. So some of them are not battery operated and I've kind of fell in love with battery operated ones that you can use. Let's plug it up and see what it's all about. And like any ODB2 reader, you're gonna to wanna to plug it into your port in the Land Rover L322, it's down there. And I'm gonna plug the back into the back of the Launch C Reader Elite 2.0. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say start, English, time zone, Whoop. I'm going to have to connect to the Wi-Fi, that is the next step. So I've connected to the Wi-Fi, I can say next step. It's going to want me to enter some information. So the thing about this is, this is, you know, designed for DIY folks or even if you're on a mechanic shop because this will enable you to be able to send PDFs to either yourself or to your customer of the diagnostics. So it's kind of cool and it will put your personal information in here. So I'm going to put jams.net as our company and then you can put your address in and all this other stuff as well. So let me type all of that in. So now it's gonna want you to agree to the disclaimer. So I agree to all the above terms. And now you can actually go in here and begin to do your scanning. This is a really nice touch screen. It's a self-contained unit. Um, I have 96% battery life left. If you look in the upper left of the device here, it actually lets you see the voltage of your battery. It's 14.1 volts. So right away I know my battery's good and the alternator's working to keep it charged. If you go to upgrade, remember you can download additional packs to this. So this is the Land Rover JAG module. Um, there are updates available. So I will go ahead and say update. So I'm gonna let all these updates run. And that's nice when you buy this for either Ford or Land Rover or Jag, whatever, BMW, that package is specific to all the ECUs and whatnot on the vehicle. And you also get upgrades with it as things might change. So let's let these updates roll. 
Okay, all the updates are done. I ended up taking it inside my house. That's another benefit of it having a battery um, because I was able to take it into my office where the internet is significantly better. And right now it's attempting to auto detect the VIN. So it will be able to do some diagnostics on this 2007 Land Rover Range Rover L322. So it's pulled the VIN, as you can see. So it's determined the VIN, the make. Yes, I want to use that. Go ahead and say OK. And it will now pull up all of the options and such that it will provide for me. Initializing the system. So it just goes through a bit of a cycle here. So VIN code, Land Rover Range Rover L322 2007, the V8 4.4 liter. Is this vehicle information correct? It is. So it's loading all the information now. Okay, so the report came back. It puts the vehicle information at the top, information that I inputted. And it gives me, I got quite a few little things going on here. Um... Transmission control module, memory error, loss communication, or vehicle speed sensor error. Some of these are just probably because things got reset and I got to do a little bit of driving. All terrain control module, invalid data, parking brake control model. So I think some of these communication errors are simply because of the undoing of the battery and whatnot that I was doing. So ideally what I want to do is continue to drive this. I have no lights on the dash. But what I'm trying to show you is the depth that this goes. Driver seat module, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. I do have no AC. It's saying there's an air quality sensor line fault. So what you can do is you can click share. And if you wanted to send this to yourself so you could review it, you can go ahead and type in, you know, who you want to go to. A little message if you want, and you can say send. So now when I open up my inbox, I'll have this document. So that's really cool because you can put anybody's email in there, or you can just send it to yourself. You don't have to worry about writing everything down. And it comes over pretty darn quick as you can see on my cell phone I have it right here and then I can click it oops I can uh, open it up and I can actually view everything that was on the screen that we saw so what's some other functionality that this can do? And this is great if you're looking at a used vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of the codes. Boop. Because I want to see what happens with the battery staying constant and as I drive. Because this car was sitting for quite some time. So very quickly, I'm basically going to clear everything. So nothing is going to be in the memory. And then I can really begin to diagnose what pops up. So out of the gate, it's battery powered. You can download the latest module and updates. You can run a report that looks pretty, pretty nice and professional that you can send yourself from the device because it has internet connectivity. And you can clear codes in seconds, but you can also, at all points, see your battery 12.6 volts up at the top. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and go to very specific things in here. You can go to this bad boy. And you can do your typical ODB2 scans that you would do by looking at specific areas. Say if you have a check engine light on or something, you could run the diagnostics, but you could also just run into specific protocols here. So this is going to run your ODB2 scan. I'm going to go ahead and say all and just let it run. So since this is a Land Rover and it has the Land Rover module, I went ahead and said use the Land Rover module that I have built in here. I can go into manually select Range Rover 0709 normal V8 and this will run the scan that's very specific to the Land Rover much of what you just saw in the diagnostics section as well. So it can either auto detect or you can go in and you can force it to run 
like I'm showing here. But you can go into special functions, and this is where you can do a lot of resets. You can look at throttle speed, exhaust emissions. Let's look at air suspension. You can do height calibration. This will calibrate the suspension height. It should not be attempted if there are no current faults. I don't have any faults, so I'm not going to do it. But this is where you can do height calibration on it. You can go, I mean, there's just a boatload of stuff you can do with the air suspension. This is really important on these Land Rovers. They sometimes have lots of little suspension issues. You can look at exhaust emissions. And it's not supported on this one. Tire pressure monitoring doesn't have it on this one. Let's look at headlamps. So you can reset your lighting power module. All of this is unique stuff to this specific Land Rover. So what I'm trying to show you is you just get a lot. Door, window, sunroof, tailgate. Like you just all kinds. So this will let this will operate the sliding roof. So that's, you know, you're basically able to control the functions of the vehicle without actually using the buttons. Go to powertrain. You can see here purge valve test, fuel leak check. You know, testing. Tells you everything that you can do. You can go in here to purge valve self-test. So now I'm testing individual modules in the vehicle. So lots of advanced functionality in a very small one. So it's complete. It's passed. So what I just demonstrated here is I'm actually testing individual modules. So you can determine, is it a module issue that I have or is it something more? So you just get so much control over it. And it's pretty darn affordable. Vehicle information, all of that we know. You know, your different ECMs. You know, you can read all the fault codes. There's no fault co codes, but if there were, you could read it. So if you had the check engine light on or something like that. Let's look at these data streams, because I really like looking at data streams. And we can select one. So let's look at battery voltage. So let's say that you have an electrics issue in your vehicle, and you're like, you know, maybe it's my battery. Maybe it's doing something weird. Battery voltage, I'm selecting it. And they can see, in real time, this streaming data, 13.8 volts. It's basically what it's hovering about. So the power of this is absolutely endless. You could record it as well, or you could output a report. So if this was like going up and down, up and down, I could say, you know what, I have an alternator issue, I have a bad battery or something like that. And there's just so many other things you can do. I'm going to uncheck battery voltage, but let's go ahead and look at something else that will show... A lot of um a lot of data here let's look at the fuel pump actually so you can see the fuel pump you know it's running if you wanted to test if you have a fuel issue you could very quickly see what's the percentage value of the fuel pump let's look for some more cool stuff and you can add a lot on it at once let's look at engine coolant temperature so right now it's 95 degrees Celsius. So if you're running hot, you could trend that as well. So I hope what you're seeing here is a very advanced scanner that's very affordable and just gives you a boatload of functionality. So do I like this launch C Reader 2.0 or my 2007 Land Rover Range Rover L322? Absolutely. In fact, I always keep a reader in my vehicles. So I do accumulate quite a few of them, but I'm gonna throw this in the glove box because what I can tell you, you could be cruising on the highway and a check engine light could come on and it could be incredibly minor or it could be kind of important. Without a reader, you're not gonna know. These L322s, I absolutely love them. However, they are prone to air suspension issues. You can see what's going on. You could do some resets without having to pull the negative terminal on the battery and reset everything. You can recalibrate. So if you're a Land Rover collector or any car collector or just a car guy in general, 
get yourself a reader. And don't just get a really basic one. Get one where you can look at data streams. You can see your coolant temperature in real time and tons of other functionality. And at the click of a button, you can send yourself a report. So this is Jason with jams.net, cars, DIY, and adventures. I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll put information to the scanner and I would recommend buying it. It's durable, it has a nice little case. And uh, I do like that it's battery powered and I can run it on my network. Have a great day. Now we got to get, uh, get this truck back on the road before it starts snowing.